Hello friends, SRAM Force 1 by 11 drivetrain. Let's listen to the RDE. You can hear some sand. And this is quite bad. So the main pivot is bad. Uh, the jockey wheels look good. This one also look, looks good. Uh, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I made for you the SRAM Apex 1x11 drivetrain, I mean the 1x11 system redrailer. Uh, just lock it like you as you can it on the SRAM. And the Apex was not very good for wet conditions and, and really cyclocross uh, conditions. I didn't like it. Uh, the the pulleys are low quality uh, bushings with no no sealants. Uh, here it looks better, but there is still th this uh, redraw still has a weak spot, which I'm gonna show you in the second. Before you um, uh, d remove any any parts or disassemble any parts. It's good to just clean the redrail from outside so that no, no dirt will come inside the bearings or as you will see the clutch or any other parts. Um, because sometimes uh, it turns out that the bearing might be very clean and you will just open it up and close it again. You will see that with the, with the pulleys here. So the pulleys are uh, okay. I like it here. So uh, what I'm using, I'm using some different brushes. Different brushes for, for this are good. Three millimeters, Allen key, there you go. Actually, I have I already removed this pulley, the down pulley, the bottom pulley, <coughs> or the tension pulley, in order to open up the cage of the derailleur and um, remove it from the chain, because otherwise you would need to break the chain. I try not to do it, uh, because... Um, uh, it, it, it will always make your power link uh, work worse. This is you, upper. So remember how you've been doing that because here's some weird thing. And L is for lower. And you always want to see the letter from the drive side. So from the outer side, from the right side of the bike. Uh, also two bolts. One is longer, one is uh, shorter. The shorter one comes here because it's it's got some nice sleeve uh, on the thread. Uh, which comes into the um, the pulley. Um, the the bottom one, the tension pulley, has both L and U letters, which is weird. But just make sure that L is on the outside. You don't see U, and it will be fine. And remember that the tension pulley is in the narrow white pattern. Uh, the um, the upper one, the guide pulley, uh, is not in the narrow white pattern, so it will be easy for you to, to recognize, but um, these are not symmetrical. These are uh, these, these are supposed to be always mounted in the, in the right way, in the right direction. Uh, clean all the parts. The, these little covers um, had some grease on them because uh, the grease will make the whole pulley more waterproof. Do not open the bearing if you feel it's clean and it doesn't spin too long, which means it's not uh, it's not dry. So if, if it's not dry and clean, do not open the bearings. There is no point of doing it. Uh, it's additional work for sure. And also if you don't work in a very clean environment, in very clean table, you can actually make it uh, work worse. Uh, you would need degreaser in order to clean the, the bearing, as I'm doing it right now. Uh, I'm, I just open it from one side just to show you that you can use the, this knife, a paper knife, and, and then push the seal exactly into its place. It's okay, it's fine. It doesn't have to, to spin too long. It has to be very smooth and silent. You don't want to hear any, not even one piece of sand there. Uh, so I'm putting uh, the grease back there and then when the when the metal covers uh, go right here 
uh, you can clean everything from the outside. You always want to have a very uh, dry and uh, non-sticky part from the outside. Inside there you want to have some some uh, some grease which works as a very 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 good sealant. The upper uh, the, the other pulley same thing uh, the bearing was just okay I'm not opening the bearing here you see this is how it works this one is not in the narrow white uh, pattern so it was the upper pulley and then the cage you want to clean both plates now we have access to everything you can see how the chain is rubbing against the cage when you um, when you change the gears very rapidly during the race for example this is the the little blocking um, bolt which uh, prevents the cage from spinning 360 degrees you will see what I'm doing in a second so remove this one first then unlock the cage and then just hold to it because there is a tension on the spring 360 degrees spin boom and we have no tension on the spring inside right there once once again three millimeters allen key we're gonna open it I will make some uh, mistake there and I left it here so that you will know because you might you might do this one as well so you will see how to fix it okay we are removing the the plate this is the outer plate okay and always look what's there is it water or or uh, grease it was a water here so uh, this part of the derailleur is not very very waterproof uh, once again I clean everything from outside which is not needed here because it is all dirty inside very dirty. you're gonna see that Okay, this is our spring. This is the tension spring, which put the uh, which puts puts the tension you know, on the cage, and I can see the sand and dirt all over the place. There is no seal there, guys. So this little plastic cover just goes there. There is a hole in it. Weird thing. Uh, yes, my Merida Mission CX eight thousand has been used in a very very cyclocrossish conditions wet a lot of mud but this is what this derailleur what this drivetrain in particular has been made for this is one by drivetrain made for gravel bikes uh, and adventure bikes and of course cyclocross bikes so clean everything use some uh, uh, some air also uh, and when you squeeze the spring like this you will hear whether there is even one piece of this of uh, sand left Make sure all the edges here uh, are clean because uh, I, I'm gonna put some grease there uh, on the on the surface on the touching surface between this little cup and uh, and the derailleur so that maybe at least less water would come in. This is the edge. This is the crucial one. There should be an O-ring which cost which would cost SRAM maybe five cents or less. I don't know why it's not there. Use Allen key in order to clean the the inside the chamber of of the spring. Uh, it's quite easy. So getting in there, even even deep down there, is not very difficult. You can see it's clean and it's dry right now. What we're gonna do now is to use the grease. I'm using just my favorite Shimano grease, which I will use for maybe ten more years, maybe five at least because uh, there's so much there do it well have it all greased and then we're gonna grease all the surface all the touching surfaces especially this crucial one I'm hoping to get less uh, to to have uh, less uh, water getting into this chamber here this is the touching surface also so a little bit of grease here you can see this is the actually the back of uh, of the clutch we're gonna open that one in the second make sure the spring is hooked uh, in in its place on both sides the plate and the inner one the chamber 
And what what I was supposed to do now is to put there the plate of the uh, of the cage, and I just <laughs> put it the bolt here, which is wrong. And now it's I'm unable to uh, unscrew this one because the the clutch won't allow me to do so. So we have to open the clutch, which we would do anyways. So I'm opening the the clutch chamber uh, and there is an o-ring here and you will see it's all clean inside but what I what I want to do first is to use four millimeters allen key on the clutch side and three on the other side in order to remove this this uh, bolt so that I can correctly now uh, assemble the plate make sure the plate has you see those two little holes uh, the hook of the spring has to go in one of those. The one that is closer to the bolt, but you will see that. You, you, cannot, you cannot do it in the wrong way here. Okay, now it should be clean and nice. It is, but we have to put the tension on the spring right now. That's how we do it. So you have to spin it around. It's nice that Shimano, that SRAM will allow you to lock it because it's easier for you now to uh, to assemble this this little lock cool not too much force maybe I don't know three newton meters here just not too much you you have to feel it don't use too much too much force here now I'm just cleaning the the outer surface of of the clutch the clutch is unserviceable it you you won't be able to open it so what I what I'm doing um uh, cleaning uh, the cap or the cover of the clutch and the o-ring which is uh, which seals up the, the the connection between two parts make sure it's dry it's clean no sand sand in particular if you if you lose if you leave like old grease it's okay if you lose sand it's bad it's very bad for the derailleur and for the performance of your of your derailleur Okay, so new grease now. New grease also just here on the outer surface. It will be waterproof. It will be water resistant. Cool, I'm putting now the o-ring back there. And important thing now is when you are screwing the this cover in, don't use too much force, maybe two newton meters. This is T25 Torx uh, key, not too much. It won't fall off. Don't won't, don't worry. Just a little bit of, of force. Feel it. This is plastic. This is plastic on the metal thread. So don't use too much force. Now I can feel that I'm feeling nothing, which is good. Uh, this is the uh, cable mounting bolt. Just remove it in order to have more access to different parts of the derailleur. The bar adjuster. That's the part where you can have some dirt and mud in it. This one is clean, quite clean. I'm surprised with it. Uh, but yes, barrel adjuster, it's always a very good idea to, to clean. Okay, now different parts of the derailleurs, both from the outside and inside there. The brush is great. The brush makes wonders. And now all the pivots, guys, which are many. You have four pivots, meaning eight, eight places where you have to put the the oil plus uh, two sides of the spring because the spring is mounted on two sides of the derailleur right so you want to have connection between the spring the tension spring and and the derailleur uh, are actually actually the pivots of the derailleur um, looped right so what kind of lubricant you can use uh, chain oil this is the, this is for the spring uh, you can use chain oil, uh, not too thick, I would say, because it will be difficult for you to clean. And this is something that um, that servicemen would do quite often, and then just spray the bike with with uh, pressure wa water. What I'm doing here, before I will clean, I will clean the derailleur now from this uh, oil. I use Brunox. This is mainly for the sealants, for the rubber parts, for the for the fork. Uh, I would use brush in order to put a very very thin film of oil on the whole derailleur so nothing will stick to it but I will make another video 
showing you the whole drivetrain, how I prepare, dr prepare drivetrain for muddy conditions. Uh, and it's I, I've been super successful with it, super successful. Okay, uh, you don't have to put this one, this pulley, just yet if you wanna uh, put now the derailleur on the bike and on the chain. Otherwise, if you've broken the chain, if it's opened, uh, you can you can assemble both pulleys. Now the bar adjuster, and here it's tricky moment. Make sure that the thread goes exactly as it should be. The, the spring will make it a little bit more difficult for you. So don't rush here. You don't want to damage that, um, that thread. If you do, uh, that means no adjustment for your derailleur, which is, especially for the rear one, it's crucial. You, you use this. From time to time, you're going to use it. Okay, make sure that um, this little... It's not a spacer, let's call it spacer under the mounting bolt uh, is in the right position. Uh, the pulleys uh, work great. And now let's listen to the derailleur. That's the music. It's super silent, no sand here, super smooth. Good work, good work, good job people, see ya.